you trans guy reacts. Um, my name is Nick Starchild, and I make videos about women's basketball, collegiate, or professional. And today I want to talk about this fever, Indiana Fever versus Seattle Storm game, and it was a doozy. If you are um, new to the game, you're an old head, um, you're more than welcome here. But if you are a new fan and you only are here for Caitlin Clark, I am not the person for you. Please go ahead and dislike this video and get out of here. I'm only here for people who actually care about the women's game as a whole and are not stands. So with that, let's get into it. Uh, this game was fantastic. It was a sellout at Climate Pledge Arena, although I've been to Climate Pledge Arena for other sellouts, so I've seen it before. This ain't new. Uh, the Storm fans are very, very loyal. They've been um, with the team for a long time, and even when they're losing, they come out and support, so I'm not surprised to see that. Um, it was really great to hear that Neko Wumake was um, able to play this game and that Nika Mule would be playing in this game because her visa uh, issues were resolved. Uh, the Ryan, the announcer guy, he introduced the starting lineups for both teams, but he completely didn't say Victoria Vivian's name, which I thought was weird. I mean, I usually like him, but he missed it there. I don't know. I was kind of disappointed because I'm like, he is their normal analyst, and I'm like, how are you going to not say the starting line, the entire starting lineup? They're too, too, too focused on Indiana and promoting Indiana, promoting Cl Caitlin Clark. Uh, in the beginning of the game, it was definitely like they were trading baskets. Seattle was so solid, though, especially with now and NECA back in the game, so they looked a lot better. But Indiana was flowing. They, they looked good, too. I was like, all right, Indiana's getting together. They're starting to click. You know, it's going to take them some time. Um, from the noise in the arena, I would say it was 90% Storm fans and probably a little bit like 10% of uh, Caitlin Clark fans because no one's fans of Indiana. They're, they're a losing team, let's be real. Um, is I'm glad to see Caitlin on the bench, honestly, because um, she, there's like four minutes to go in the first quarter. She was on the bench, and I kind of feel like she makes a lot of errors, and she needs to watch the game a little bit, and then when she watches the game, she gets back in, she's better. So I think she should be in more like shorter stretches, but that's my opinion. I'm sure her stands want her on the floor all the time, but she's not that good, so she needs time to develop the game. Um, crazy Ezzy Magmavor had two blocks. It, they were fucking stunning. Um, Erica Wheeler commits the take foul on Jewel. Like, no one can guard Jewel. They were double teaming her. It was kind of funny, but it was not working. Um, Jordan Horston had this crazy block on Boston, which is wild because Jordan is shorter than her. Uh, and then Jewel was going off. She had 12 points in the first quarter. 12. Wild, wild. And uh, for Caitlin Clark, Sammy Whitcomb was guarding her, and she could not handle that. Sammy Whitcomb is just too experienced. She's an international player. She's played overseas many places. She's played in the W. She is just more experienced of a, a of a basketball player. And you could tell Caitlin was getting frustrated. She was like pushing her off and stuff. And I was like, oh, getting irritated. I'd love to see it. Um, Jordan Horson had another block on Fag Benley, Timmy Fag Benley. Again, huge. Jordan's getting up there. I can't believe that she was getting all those blocks. It was at the end of the first, it was 16 to 25. Seattle's up. I'm like, all right, Seattle's got this because they've lost a lot of games previously. They've been working back. Um, love to see that Lexi Holt actually got in the damn game. Um, it's about damn time. She was in the game um, uh, and actually was really good defensively. She made some mistakes later on, but like she was pretty good. I'm, I need to see her more in the game. Uh, Lexi, uh, t two minutes into the, into the second quarter, uh, Caitlin finally scores. <laughs> she gets her, her layup. Um, Lexi even hits a three, so that was really cool to see. But I did notice in the very beginning, Skylar Diggins-Smith was definitely struggling. She was having a hard time today. Boston got two quick fouls on NECA. NECA was just like, you ain't gonna guard me, girl. I'm, a, I'm, I'm. <laughs> She's been in the game for too long. Um, Fever uh, does get the score down to five points, though, at, at one point. Uh, it's 29 to 34 with four and a half minutes left in the second quarter. But... Ref misses an obvious foul on Vivian's. It's freaking wild. It's so clear as day that it's a foul. Misses it. And then, again, I'm like, where is Lexi? She's not on the floor again. I don't know. She's in and off the floor a lot throughout the game. Then there's another no call from the refs against the Storm. NECA, it just, it just it blows my mind. Anyway, but NECA's a vet. She's, she's getting through it. They And then finally Clark gets this driving layup. I'm like, girl, yeah, where you at? She's just like ball watching. I don't know. Um, Ezzy Magalhor blocks the hell out of Clark. Pops her down, even hits her in the face a little bit. They don't call the foul. Again, refs are not not doing what they need to do. Uh, Nalissa gets uh, the put back though, so it's fine. And get the ball goes in. Then we're at halftime. It's forty to forty four at halftime. Storm are up, but it's still only a four point game. I'm like, oh, fever, fever are in this. They could they could maybe take this game. 
at that point at the half, NECA had 14 points and five rebounds, um, and um, uh, Jewel Lloyd had 21 points and eight re rebounds. The Gold Mamba was hot. She was hot tonight. Um, like Melissa Smith had 12 points and six rebounds. Uh, so you know, and then Clark only had five points, but she didn't have any turnovers at the half. I was like, whoa, an improvement. Good job, good job, Caitlin. The refing though in this game, like I said, was wild, super wild. A lot of no calls on both sides of the of the floor for Storm and for the Fever. Uh, but that's not new in the W. I've experienced this over the years. The refereeing is not great. They typically um, uh, are inconsistent and don't call the right things. I think it has a lot to do with uh, they're coming from different leagues and different systems and then they come straight into the w and they don't know the rules and they don't know how the players play it's like new refs you know like people who've never ref the w before um namely the bald white guy he's like new this year number 23 i've seen him in other games and he's he's called he's had some really bad calls and then the other bald black guy number 33 i've never seen him before i've never seen him call a game and he was the one who was later on was making very very bad calls uh, I do trust number 42 he's a ref he's been refing the W for years so I do trust him and I'm glad he was the lead ref and he was like fixing stuff because I was like whoa the other two guys were absolutely horrible um Skyler finally scores at the start of the third uh, quarter but she doesn't really score after that I don't think um, they are double teaming Jewel. It's crazy. Um, a lot in this game, but she can make the shot. So it didn't really matter. They would double team her and she'd still make it. Um, Jordan Horston with the block on Boston and then forced them to, t uh, to a shot clock violation. This game was so fun. Um, analysts calling out Boston's bad play. Um, They're saying like she almost had, you know, her rookie season last year, she was rookie of the year. She almost had 15 points a game and now just under 10 points a game. But it's only been five games. I'm like, give this girl some some slack. Everyone goes through like the sophomore slump. I mean, even Jordan Horston is, you know, not, she hasn't been the best the last few games, you know, like give, give people some time. Uh, a lot of hate on her because the Caitlin Clark stands are racist and they want to blame anything that, like when the team messes up oh it's boston's fault it's boston's fault she's not doing right oh it's the rest of the team's fault oh it's christy side's fault so it's like a little bit of the racism a little bit of like the team sucks but it's like the team always sucked what are you talking about and last year they did way better so you don't know what you're talking about you just came to the league just now so it's just yap 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 um but it does seem like melissa smith is the only person making plays for indiana and Fem timmy fag benley but she gets in some trouble later clark finally makes a three with five minutes left in the third, she had a very slow start. Uh, it's taking her a while to figure things out, but but this is typical. She's a she's a rookie. It's fine. She's gonna get it. Lexi Hole is back in the game. Wheeler makes a layup, um, and then Seattle takes a timeout because it's fifty to fifty four, three forty six left in the third. Um, Indiana is still in it mainly because of Neka uh, Neka sorry uh, uh, Neka and Jewel are scoring, but not Skyler and Jordan. So there's a little bit of discrepancy there, and they're staying in it. Uh, but the Fever kind of had all the players scoring, so it was a little bit more even. Um, and then Clark block got blocked by uh, Ezzy. <laughs> that was crazy. Uh, but Jewel body checks her, so it's, it ends up being another foul. Uh, then ne uh, Nika Mule comes in the game with 2 minutes and 39 seconds left. The crowd goes wild. Crowd gives her a standing ovation. Okay, gives a rookie a standing ovation. That is, that is fantastic. Um, she's only in the game for a few minutes, but you know, she, she's a little rusty, so she doesn't need to be in the game the whole time. Just get some minutes in there. And she's actually pretty effective. She does some, uh, a little bit of uh, defense in there. Clark hits a three, ties the game 54-54. We got two minutes left in the third. Carly hits the layup, and they're up two, so it's 56-54. to They finally get the lead, and then Clark with the layup. Seems like she's finally waking up. Okay, I'm like, finally, Clark, you're getting it. You're watching, you're seeing, you're reacting. She's doing the right things. Then there's another no whistle when Clark fouls Sammy Whitcomb, which was wild. It was a clear foul. She, like, basically tackled her, and there was no call. It was like, what? Is this? These refs. Oh, my God. It's 60 to 58 uh, at the end of the third. Fever's up. I'm like, all right, all right. Fever might be in this. They might be able to call this game. Um, oh, let me bring this back a little bit. Um, uh, it, it's 60 to 65 with uh but then sorry sorry excuse me the bald black guy calls a foul that was clearly clean noel <laughs> super clean noel quinn the coach for a storm challenges it challenges it and they win because it was clearly not a foul that's number one on this guy okay that's the first one he he calls incorrectly so then it's 60 to 65 stormer up it's 8.50 seconds left eight minutes and 50 seconds left in the fourth timeout for the fever damn and then timmy Faglin. uh 
uh, Vec Benley with that offensive foul on Jewel. Whoo, it was like a freight train coming, but Jewel was blocked. She was like, come at me. <laughs> and she gets the offensive foul. I have to say, looking through this game, Skylar Diggins-Smith was terrible tonight. She did not play very well, unfortunately. But she did realize it and stopped shooting the ball and just kept passing it. And they're like, yes, just pass the ball. You're not you're not shooting well tonight. Uh, and she's a, she's a bet, so she knows. Um, they tied it 69 to 69. Five and minutes and 30 seconds left in the game. They're trading threes now, back and forth. It gets 72 to 76. Stormer up, three minutes left. And then Lexi fouls on a three-point for Jewel Lloyd. Hmm. That was a bad, bad call. I not a bad call, bad play for Lexi. Um, I don't know why they need to review it. It was very clear that it was a three, but they review it. Jewel and Jewel does her free throw. She makes all free, three free throws. Seventy-two to seventy-nine. Storm up. Then Jordan Horston fouls Kelsey Mitchell, and she makes both of those. So now we're seventy-four to uh, seventy-nine. Then Sammy Wickham fouls Clark, and she makes all uh, on a three pointer, and she makes all three of them. Oh, that's crazy! So then we're seventy seven to seventy nine. One minute and fifty seconds left. This is getting crazy. I'm like, it's anyone's ball game. Don't know what's gonna happen. Jordan Horson gets the layup. Uh, it's seventy seven to eighty one. Clark gets the layup. Seventy nine to eighty one. Ezzy McElvoy left open for a layup. Seventy nine eighty three. This is it's going crazy. Then. Fouls on Fag Benley and Seattle gets the ball back, and uh, that was Fag, uh, Timmy Fag Benley's sixth foul, so she's out of the game, which is a huge bummer for them because she was really affecting the ball. Kelsey Mitchell gets the layup and fouls, uh, and a foul from Neca. It's eighty-one to eighty-three with fourteen seconds left. Whoa, the the ref again comes in here. Okay, <laughs> the ball on the black guy. Second call is reversed because no Noel's like no I'm challenging that foul that's not that's not a foul and it wasn't and it was a, a successful challenge and I'm like this dude two times now has called the wrong play and had to be challenged and Noel was right it's and then she doesn't have any more challenges after that I'm like he's he's new and he's making too many mistakes you make two mistakes in a row and you're you're really costing the game at this point anyway then Lexi uh, unfortunately fouls Jewel hard when she gets the ball inbounded. Jewel makes one of two of the shots. There's 13 seconds left. Fever take a timeout. This is just getting wild. Sammy fouls Caitlin on the inbound. She gets two free throws. She makes both. We're 83 to 84. It's a one point game. Whew. Then the refs are not getting these timeouts right. They have to go the, like the announcer, one of the analysts, have to tell them like the rep, the the timeouts aren't accurate. So the analysts on the floor. The people calling the game, they were fucking up. They had to fix that. It was a lot of delay of the game for that. Storm do have a reset timeout. Ref calls a jump ball when Sammy inbounds the ball to NECA and Melissa gets a Smith gets a hand on it. Really quickly, it's not they're not they're not holding the ball up. He calls a jump ball. The fuck? It's the ball black guy again. This is the what are you doing, bruh? We have 13 seconds left and you, you are calling the most ridiculous calls. Christy Size challenges the call. She wins it because it, the ball does go off of Neca's hand, but it's not a jump ball. So we're 11 seconds left. This is crazy. It gets tipped out by the, the inbound the ball. It gets tipped out by Ezzie McElroy. Fever have to call a timeout. Whew. Then they go for the inbound, and Clark loses the ball and fumbles it, gives it to Boston. Boston gets uh, locked up for the jump ball. It's 4.7 seconds left in the game. What? So then it's... Uh, jump ball between uh, Leah Boston and Jordan Horston. Jordan doesn't even jump for the ball. Aaliyah tips it and it goes straight to Neca. Neca gets the ball. She's fouled. 2.6 seconds left. She does miss the first uh, free throw, but she makes the second. It's uh oh, gotta go back. Ooh. <laughs> she does make the um, she does misses the first free throw, but she does make the second. It's 83 to 85. Whew. Then they have the ball. They inbound the ball, and for some reason, Melissa Smith throws the ball to Aaliyah Boston, and she has to force the ball up well before half point, misses, wow, it's over, the Storm win 83 to 85, what a fucking ending to that game, that was wild, that was some wild shit, the breakdown of this, I would say, is from the scoring, uh, from the scoring perspective, Melissa Smith has 16 points and 11 rebounds. She had a double-double. She played fantastic. Kelsey Smith has 17 points. Caitlin Clark had 21 points, 7 rebounds, 7 assists, and only 3 turnovers. Look at that. Look at her improving. Good, good for her. Um, she played pretty well. Uh, issue was Grace Berger, Victoria Saxton, Celeste Taylor did not play in the game at all, which I think is a big mistake. I think Grace needs to be, at least Grace needs to be in the game. 
Um, Neko Wimike, though, on the Storm side, Neko Wimike had 22 points and 9 rebounds, almost a double-double. Ezzy McElroy had 14 points and 9 rebounds, almost a double-double. Jewel Lloyd had 32 points, 11 rebounds. She definitely got her double-double. And Sammy Whitcomb had uh, 10 points. Uh, Jordan Horston, uh, I think, I don't know if she scored, but she had four blocks for sure. And then it was nice to see uh, Nika Mule in the game. She only she only had like two minutes in the game, but she did get two rebounds. So she And she did some defensive blocks, so she was effective. Dolce um, Famkin, Menjiaru, and Keanu Williams did not play for Seattle. Now, my perspective on this game is that we were losing this game because of Clark, fumbling that in pass, and then Melissa giving, and then so the first sequence is Clark fumbling that in pass. They could have won this game. Then they definitely lost the game when Alyssa Smith gave the ball to Boston for the last shot instead of Clark. They lost They lost it. And But it's very typical because last year they lost most of their games by less than five points. They lose this game by two points. This is what happened last year. I'm not surprised that this is happening this year. They are getting closer. They will get better. It will get better over time, but they're definitely not going to win their next couple of games. They also don't have any time, any breaks. They're going... Literally, they have one day off, and that's usually the travel day, and they're just going to each new place, and they're not being able to practice, so they're not being able to correct things. So, unfortunately, I would say Caitlin Clark played really well for a rookie. She has This is a great game for her as a rookie, but she is not living up to the expectations that people are putting on her, which is exactly what the vets said. All of them said she's going to do well, she's going to play well, but she is not going to be dominating like she did in college. There is a learning curve. She will probably get there, maybe by the end of the season, but she's not going to get there right now. It's going to take time. <laughs> and um, I think, actually, that if Skylar Diggins-Smith had played better, uh, the Storm would have would have won by a much lar- margin, margin, a margin, like maybe like uh, like 10 points instead of 2. But Skylar struggled a lot in this game, and they weren't able to pull, pull that out. But hey, they won the game, and that's all that matters, and that's all she wrote. Um, if you like this coverage of the W in these games, I really appreciate you being here. Go ahead, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Um, I do not allow comment sections. It's usually a bunch of trolls, so I don't have time for that. Um, but if you appreciate this, I would love to um, have you back for the next one. I'm trying to do almost every day. I won't be able to do every day recaps because I'll be busy some days, but I'm going to try to do almost every single game as a recap. All right, thanks for watching. Appreciate y'all. Peace.